today let's see how to approach a case of skeletal dysplasia and this video is just an introduction to approach a skeletal dysplasia case like once we see the skeletal survey how to go about it based on the location etc let's see what dysplasia means and how it's different from dysostosis dysplasia is due to some genetic mutations and it will evolve throughout life Dysostosis is blastogenesis malformation defects which is a one time damage happening in utero and it is static throughout the life example clippel fail syndrome what all x rays we'll take in a dysplasia skeletal survey skull ap and lateral view thoraco lumbar spine this also ap and lateral view next chest ap pelvis with bilateral hips ap and one upper limb with one lower limb in case of suspected epiphyseal dysplasia both upper limbs and both lower limbs are supposed to be taken once x rays are obtained we'll move on with evaluation we follow a b c of evaluation a is anatomical location where we see the location of pathologies axial or in appendicular skeleton next we see the bones and where in the bones is the location that is epiphyseal metaphyseal or diaphyseal location or mixed location of the deformity next we'll look for the complications like scoliosis osteoarthritis and any fractures that is pathological fractures we we'll look at each of these headings in a very broader sense with few examples coming to axial skeleton what dysplasias can involve axial skeleton like in case of skull involvement this achondroplasia cleidocranial dysplasia in case of mandible it is involved in pycnodysostosis clavicle is involved in conditions like cleidocranial dysplasia where cleido literally means clavicle ribs can be involved in asphyxiating thoracic dysplasia also called atd or thanatophoric dysplasia spine can be involved in the form of beaking or platyspondyly seen in conditions like spondyla epiphyseal dysplasia spondylo means spine and in mucopolysaccharidosis coming to appendicular skeletal it becomes important to know that which segment of upper limb or lower limb is involved this is normal now if the proximal segment of upper limb or lower limb that is humerus or femur is involved shortened it's called rhizomalia which is seen in conditions like achondroplasia or spondylo epiphyseal dysplasia congenita if the middle segment is involved that is radius ulna tibia or fibula involved it's called mesomalia seen in mesomelic dysplasia if both the proximal and the middle segment is involved or shortened it's called as micromalia which is seen in conditions like achondrogenesis coming to the distal segment that is palm or the foot hand or the foot is involved or shortened it's called as acromalia it's seen in acrodysostosis pelvis which is a part of appendicular skeleton can be involved in conditions like achondroplasia we are done with a of evaluation that is anatomical location now coming to b that is bones epiphyseal location can be seen in conditions like chondrodysplasia punctata where epiphysis is punctated next it can be seen in spondylo epiphyseal dysplasia metaphysis can be involved in achondroplasia diaphyseal involvement can be seen in conditions like progressive diaphyseal dysplasia also known as angelman's disease all the dysplasias which match with the x-ray features are put into groups group 1 contains epiphyseal dysplasia with or without spine involvement group 
contains metaphyseal dysplasias with or without limb shortening group 3 contains dysplasias with altered bone densities and group 4 contains miscellaneous disorders which do not fall into any particular group this classification is based on 2010 revision of nosology and classification of genetic skeletal disorders by international skeletal dysplasia society let's overlook each group and see what all conditions fall under them in group 1 that is epiphyseal dysplasia if height of vertebral bodies is normal that is if platys pondyli is absent then condition might be chondrodysplasia punctata if vertebral bodies are flattened that is if platys spondyli is present then condition might be spondyla epiphyseal dysplasia congenita or tarda and neist dysplasia there are some conditions which show both epiphyseal and metaphyseal irregularity they also come under this group in these conditions also we should look for platys spondyli if platys spondyli is present then condition might be pseudo achondroplasia mucopolysaccharidosis and spondylo epiphyseal epimetaphyseal dysplasia if platys spondyli is absent then condition might be multiple epiphyseal dysplasia coming to group 2 where metaphysis is involved and metaphysis is the growth zone so it will cause abnormal limb length so types are rhizomelic metaphysial dysplasia which can be achondroplasia hypochondroplasia thanatophoric dysplasia then there is mesomelic or acromelic metaphysial dysplasia which will have shortened mid segments that's chondroectodermal dysplasia it's also known as ellis van creveil syndrome and asphyxiating thoracic dysplasia group 3 has dysplasias which show altered bone density that is either osteopenia or osteosclerosis osteopenia is seen in osteogenesis imperfecta osteosclerosis is of multiple types that is if there's a defect in enchondral bone formation it can result in conditions like osteopetrosis pycnodysostosis bone island or enostosis osteopoikilosis or osteopathia striata that is enchondral bone formation next type is defect in intramembranous bone formation that can result in progressive diaphyseal dysplasia also known as angelman's disease next is mixed sclerotic type of disorders that is melioriostosis group 4 has conditions which do not particularly fall under any category like cleidocranial dysplasia cleido means clavicle cranial means skull to summarize you can approach a skeletal survey using the following flow charts first look at the spine if platys spondyli is present then look at the extremities look at the bones and which part is involved if epiphysis is involved then it can be in conditions like spondyla epiphysia dysplasia congenita or tarda or pseudo achondroplasia or neist dysplasia if epiphysis and metaphysis is involved then it can be in conditions like spondylo epiphyseo metaphyseal dysplasia morcu syndrome or mucopolysaccharidosis or metatrophic dysplasia if platys spondyli is absent then again look at the extremities if epiphysis is involved then it can be chondrodysplasia punctata or multiple epiphyseal dysplasia if metaphysis is involved then it can be achondroplasia hypoachondroplasia metaphyseal dysplasia you can write this down or take a screenshot
moving on to next flow chart we look at the skull if vermian bones are present then it can be cleidocranial dysplasia pycnodysostosis cleidocranial dysplasia has normal bone density pycnodysostosis has increased bone density and mandible is involved now if there is thick skull in this patient then it can be osteopetrosis or craniotubular dysplasia osteopetrosis will have obliterated medullary cavity in other bones and in craniotubular dysplasia it's preserved these flow charts makes it easier for you to remember the individual dysplasia findings also like for example if you take case of achondroplasia then you can know that metaphysis is involved and platis spondylitis is absent so if you remember the flow chart you will remember the findings of individual dysplasias so among all these dysplasias please comment down below which you need me to discuss individually in a separate video and follow for more videos our youtube and instagram handle at radiology doodles